Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Eugene for TSC Games, and today we have a cool little review for you. It's an indie game called Lily Looking Through, and it was funded on Kickstarter. It actually more than doubled what they intended to get. I think it got $35,000 or something like that out of the 15000 that they tried to get. And it's an indie game. It's a point-and-click ad action adventure, but more point-and-click puzzle game. So, Fred, you had some playthrough in the game. What do you think about it? Well, first off, visually, I think it's beautiful. All the drawings are, are handmade. Really nice looking game. Very relaxing. Gives me a, a, a very chill vibe. Kind of takes me back to my childhood a little bit. And uh, I think the one thing that describes this game best is imagination. You know, when you're a kid, your imagination runs wild. And with Lily looking through, especially with the goggles feature, man, it, it definitely, definitely lets your imagination run wild. No one world is alike. No one level is alike. Granted, each level has a puzzle that you have to solve be a trial and error. But man, I, I'd say it's visually stunning and very relaxing, and it's also really easy to just get lost in the game. I mean, I played this game for a couple hours at a time, and it just passed through. I never felt like it was being dragged on. I never felt like, man, oh, this is taking forever. Okay, remember there were a couple puzzles that did frustrate me after we'll a while. We'll get to those a little later. We'll get those a little later, but it was a nice, relaxing game. It took me really back to my childhood. It's not that this isn't a kid's game. This is just a game for people of all ages, and this was just a very relaxing, chill vibe. That's why I got out of it, especially initially playing it with the level you're watching right now. What I en really enjoyed about the game is that in the puzzles, anything's possible. And the, way, the only way to solve those puzzles is basically to try everything. So, And as far as the story, there's not much to it. And as you can see on the screen right now, this is her brother walking out. And you're basically going to be chasing her brother across multiple levels with multiple puzzles. And as Fred brought up, the goggle feature, as you can see the goggles are hang hanging right there right now, it's a very clever feature. What it does, it actually takes you to the past, so the actions that you perform while in that world will affect the, uh, the level. So we'll show you some of those videos in a bit. And actually the creator, along with his wife, Steve and Jessica Hogendyke, they, as you mentioned, they funded us on Kickstarter. They actually had a cool little trailer where they actually gave a real-world example. So they showed a road, or I guess like a grassy road or you know, part of a field that, that was mowed. And then Steve put on the goggles, and all of a sudden you cut to the next scene, and he's wet and looks like he was drowning to signify the fact that there may have been a river there in the past. It, de it definitely is really cool. And the one thing is you're not just using the goggles and one level, and then not using the goggles on another level, you're switching in and out. Sometimes you switch in and out during the course of an action. Yeah, that that actually took me a while to get. There was a part in a, I think it's like the fourth level or so, where you have to switch while performing another action to make it work. And it's really weird because the hint system in the game, it doesn't tell you much. All the hint system does is tell you which objects are movable basically or which objects you can interact with and some of the objects you have Lily coming up to and performing an action and others as you saw previously in the video the wheel for the little cart it actually like, drops off and you can pick up the wheel and place it on the cart yeah this game definitely doesn't hold your hand which is a good thing at the end of the day you want a game that's going to be challenging now the length isn't particularly long in this game but it is certainly a fun one to get lost in. The thing that weirded me out though, and I, I don't want to say it's so much weirded me out as a gamer, but just in the context of the game, Lily is the one that's primarily performing these actions, right? So isn't it a little weird to randomly be able to grab a burning stick, to grab an acorn, and yes, granted those are part of the puzzles, but shouldn't Lily, and this is a minor thing, but shouldn't Lily be grabbing those things? as opposed to the gamer themselves breaking the fourth wall within the story and doing that themselves? I don't know. You tell me, Eugene. Uh, I completely agree with you. I don't. Th I think that they should have had Lily perform the actions, but it's a very minor thing. And in some of them, it kind of it's hard, but it, it also, like you said, breaks the fourth wall at some points. 
Definitely, definitely. Overall, though, I'd say this is a, a very fun game. I mean, visually, again, as I'll say it again, visually, aesthetically, it is a stunning game. You could tell a lot of effort was put into that. The only drawback, I'd say, uh, about the aesthetics is the fact that, like we mentioned before, you know, the acorn, uh, the, there's like sometimes a stick or a wheel that you got to grab that Lily doesn't grab herself that you have to attach to something in order to solve a puzzle or begin to solve a puzzle. And the problem is... The color scheme isn't the best when it's highlighted. So if you're colorblind or if you don't have the best eyesight, uh, it's kind of hard to tell when to click on something or not. I mean, it's not the easiest game if you are colorblind or hard of seeing. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of games don't have specific colorblind options. The problem I found with that is that you ha kind of had to use the hint system to find the object, actually on more than one occasion. And I didn't want to use the hint system. And otherwise, without the hint system, it would have been really hard to see and find. Definitely, definitely. I mean, other than that, I mean, I'd say this was an awesome game. I really had a lot of fun. Uh, puzzle games, personally, aren't normally my, th my thing, unlike you, Eugene, who are, Talking you are the guru. Talking about puzzles, <laughs> uh, I think this level is the one that gave you some trouble. Uh, yes. Want to share it, some of your experiences on that? Uh, yeah. It, rule number one, pay attention. Rule number two, pay attention. Rule number three, pay attention. Rule number four, if you think you've tried something that didn't work before, but you're unsure, try it again, try it again, and try it again. <laughs> That's the only way you're going to get through these levels. Sometimes you, for example, in this level, you, there involves bubbles and different size bubbles. And for whatever reason, I, I don't know, maybe my eyes deceived me. I only thought that you can make two sizes of bubbles. When in reality, you could actually make more than two. Not giving away how many you could actually make. And uh, yeah, let's just say when I finally figured it out, it got pretty easy. Before that, eh, well, not so much. It gets easy once you figure the puzzle out. But as soon as you get to the next level, what I love about this game, like you mentioned before, every puzzle is completely different. Every puzzle has different actions you perform, and they're not linked to previous puzzles. So the game, during the whole gameplay, it never got repetitive. It was always something new, it was always something different, it was always something exciting to figure out. Definitely. I really, like I said, I really enjoyed this game. And granted, Eugene, you beat this game a lot faster than I did. So I, I think you would say, and even I would say, that the only real, real drawback of this game is its length. It's not that long. But yes. for eight ninety nine retail price... For eight ninety nine, it's a great experience to have. It's this game is an experience. This game is an adventure, and like you mentioned before, this game is a child's fantasy. Anything's possible. You go through this world. Uh, there, are some of the puzzles you wouldn't even. They're so clever, you wouldn't even think of making things like that. Uh, they're so clever and weird and with the goggle feature going to the past and the present and different actions affecting different things, the game has very creative puzzles. And like I said, I do, the drawback is the length. I did beat the game in about two and a half hours or so. If you're fairly decent in puzzle games, you can probably beat this game in about two to three hours. And unfortunately, there's not much replay value in the puzzle game because once you solve the puzzle, there's not much left to do. You already know the solution. You're not going to play through it again. Unfortunately, there is no time limit on this game, uh, let's say like Super Meat Boy, where you can replay the same level more than once just to beat your previous time. Here, unfortunately, they don't have anything like that. And the way the game is designed with the point and click actions and the slow movement, it's paced to be slower. It's paced to take your time and think about what you're actually doing in the puzzles. Overall, though, I would say this is an awesome first installment from GD Games. I think the Hogan Dykes and their team have nothing to be ashamed of. I had a lot of fun playing this game. 